Gentlemen, I call to order the Clackamas County Board of Commissioners in our business meeting today. I'd like Mr. Krupp, our county administrator, to call the roll. Well, good morning, commissioners. It looks like it's going to be a beautiful day today. I understand temperatures may hit 82 degrees, so uh, break out the cocoa butter and uh, get ready to enjoy the day. Uh, joining us today, of course, is uh, Mr. Stephen Madcor, our county council, and then serving as our clerk of the board today is Mr. Kevin Moss. So I'll start with the roll. Commissioner Bernard. Here. Commissioner Savitz. Here. Commissioner Schrader. Here. Chair Ludlow. Here. Would all please rise and join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. And the force, first Thing on our agenda today is presentations. We have a presentation, Mr. Yes, Crump. we do. We have uh, Mr. Tim Heider here with our Public and Governmental Affairs uh, Department, and we're going to hear about uh, National Government Month and Outreach uh, from Tim. So, Correct. Tim. Thank you, Chair Ludlow and Commissioners. Good morning. My name is Tim Heider from Public and Government Affairs. And every April, the National Association of Counties, and an organization all of you are familiar with, declares April to be National County Government Month. And the goal of National County Government Month is to raise awareness and understanding of the roles and responsibilities of counties in the lives of all Americans. This year's theme is Safe and Secure Counties, which aligns very closely with one of your strategic goals in the Performance Clackamas Plan, which is ensuring safe and secure communities. Throughout April, Clackamas County will actively promote and uh, describe how the county keeps its communities safe and secure. Our county plays a central role in keeping us safe and secure through the Sheriff's Office and our criminal justice agencies by fostering economic opportunity and by responding to natural disasters and emergencies. Similarly, Clackamas County invests heavily in the health and well-being of its residents. A key part of that role is responding to emergencies. Today, as part of our recognition, we are honoring the dedicated county staff who participated in the public health response to the hepatitis A response last February. Following the report of a single incident of hepatitis A involving a, an employee at a Sandy Movie Theater, the county launched a coordinated and collaborative effort to protect and inform our residents. Within a week of the initial incident, the county and its partners were able to provide needed medication to 232 people who might otherwise have been at risk of exposure. I'd like to share with you now a video of that coordinated response. were hard at work responding to a recent case of hepatitis A in the county. Within seven days of the report, our public health division and health care partners immunized more than 200 people who were potentially exposed to the disease at a local cinema. Hepatitis A is a viral disease that affects the liver, and public health officials made the decision to alert the public and provide medication to lower the risk of exposure. After an exposure for hepatitis A, there are medications that help, help decrease the risk of getting the disease if you were exposed. We did a lot of work calling our local partners and pharmacies to try to find enough medication for everyone. It's not something that's always routinely held by clinicians or even pharmacies. And then we worked with our state and federal partners and were able to hold three clinics to get these medications to people within that two-week time frame where the medications are useful if you're exposed. 
When we first started this incident, we moved pretty quickly because we didn't have all the information we needed. We didn't know about all the um, different medications that were available throughout the community. And so we had staff in the health department that actually reached out to our local pharmacies and clinics um, to assess what was available. And actually we had um, partners such as Legacy, Providence, and Adventist Health that really stepped up, contacted us, and, and they leaned forward and said, we want to be part of a response, we want to help our local communities. And the partnership just grew in terms of having staff that could give vaccines and aminoglobin to um, citizens, um, and also helping a lot with all the planning that we had to do. So hepatitis A is rare, and exposures like this are even rarer. However, it is a vaccine-preventable disease, and I encourage everyone to talk with their healthcare providers about this and other vaccine-preventable diseases to find out what immunizations might be appropriate for them, given their age and their risk factors. To find out more information about how the Clackamas County Public Health Division is helping promote a safer, healthier community, go to clackamas.us forward slash public health. So as you can see, the professional and quick response of county staff was instrumental to stopping this public health threat. The divisions and departments that came together included facilities management, technology services, disaster management, health, housing, and human services, and public and government affairs. I'd like to take a moment to recognize the staffers involved in this effort. If you could please re uh, stand as I read your name. At the end of the ceremony, you can come forward and we can have a photo with the county commissioners. From technology services, Mark McBride. From Disaster Management, Nancy Bush, who could not be here today, and Sarah Ekman. From Public and Government Affairs, Scott Anderson, Dylan Blaylock, Ryan Johnson, and Garrett Teague. From Health, Housing, and Human Services, Alejandra Cheney, Dan Leisure, and Joel Ferguson, who inspected the cinema. Our Department uh, Operations Center Manager, Larry McDaniels. Philip Mason couldn't be here today, but he was in the video. Sonny Lee, who staffed the planning section. Our Operations Center staff, Julie Albers, Amanda Brunton, Erica Gillespie, Julie Hamilton, Kristen Ingersoll, and Kathy Thompson. Our, logis our, our logistics and general support staff, Sherry Whitehead, Marco Enciso, Karen Webb, Susan Burns Norman, and Maritza Torres. Paula Solis and Elizabeth Baca, who provided the Spanish language translation for our web content and in our Public Inquiry Center. Our Public Inquiry Center call-in staff, Scott France, Risa Kemp, Jean Weber, Lindsay Butler, and Kathy Perry. Our liaisons to the health centers, Andrew Suchalki and Jeanette McLeod. The following staff, the evening clinics in Sandy, Carolyn Asher, Patrice McGinney, McGinnity, excuse me, Marion Russo, Stephanie Hartwig, Virginia McIntyre, Concetta Branson, Mary Horman, April Heron, Jamie Zentner, and last but certainly not least, our superstar Tri-City Health Officer, Sarah Present. <laughs> Thanks to all of you who are involved, and thank you, commissioners, for this recognition. Well, they asked us to come stand. Come on down, Jax. Um, we're going to stand up here all together, and they're going to be down there because there's so many of them. Okay. There we go. <laughs> Dr. President is present. Uh, there we go. Here we go. Let me move this. Yeah, stand I know. I know. I need to stand on tiptoe. There you go. <laughs> Find a space. Here we go, Tracy. Yep, thank you. Congratulations, everybody, and thank you. Congratulations. <laughs> yeah, you 
used to have like a little block in here. <laughs> <laughs> the, booster, the booster step. The booster step. Uh, Jim, you had your light on. Yeah, I just wanted to comment that, uh, you know, this is one of the things that county government does that people seldom realize, public health. It's one of our primary jobs. It's also nice since oftentimes people come and criticize government that this is a celebration of what government does and what counties do. Um, there is a great chart we have that uh, folks should uh, look at, and that is what uh, counties do, states do, and federal government does. That's so important to, the, to you, to uh, your day-to-day -day life that you probably have no idea. But um, because I'm surprised some people didn't show up with black armbands because we're celebrating government. But, uh, you know, um, this morning I had an opportunity to go to a, a, a Kurt Schrader event and, and talk about, uh, you know, transportation funding, uh, which is the, it's the first time in many years that the federal government actually did something about transportation funding. I don't exactly like how they're funding it, uh, but uh, at least we have something on the table. And um, in, in many ways, uh, we do a great job at, uh, at, at our job, but not about promoting uh, the good work we do. So uh, uh, thank you for coming. And I can't even look at a shot being given on a video screen. <laughs> I saw that. Yeah, same thing. Commissioner Savas. I was just kind of wondering, this kind of a <clears throat> inspired the thought here maybe of being government, not, but I thought the uh, video presentation was great and highlighted this particular uh, part of our service provision of government. But perhaps maybe a short video, well, probably won't be short, but maybe of all the things that we do with all the different departments, just kind of get a, a snapshot of all the different aspects we do. Because we all always get asked, regardless of the time of year, what, what does the county do? And I think this would be a great opportunity to highlight maybe the variety. And um, again, I was inspired by the video. I thought it was a great video, but uh, maybe get an assembly of all those different aspects of things we do. Commissioner Bernard? Actually, this is kind of a follow-on to what something I've suggested over the years, and that's called it's speed dating. And that is that we put tables around and we put departments so that citizens can come through the county offices. And not only that, but a lot of our employees don't know what we do. They're, you know, they're in their little departments or big departments, and they don't have any idea what we do. I think it'd be a great idea to do that speed dating just for our citizens to come and meet the commissioners, meet the various departments, and just find out the amazing work we do. So speed dating. All right. And now on, to, this is a really light agenda, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, but so we do have citizens' communication, though I have a single card here. It's Mr. Les Poole. Good morning. I, I agree that summer's here, and I made sure that I wore this shirt. Um, it's good to see the orb up there. Uh, Interestingly, we just heard some comments about government and money, and uh, today I just wanted to, to chat briefly about the economy, um, but not in general. Specifically, um, a question that I think the commissioners individually should weigh in on at some point, and, and that's what is your feeling about IP28, uh, that the proposed initiative that uh, will basically tax products and services from start to finish. Um, it's a really important question, and I realize it's not something that the county is presenting. It's a statewide effort. But one looks at what I mentioned last week about Salem, and how ironic that Commissioner Bernard, who um, is running for the chair, would pleasantly compliment government at a time when a lot of us have got some big concerns. I don't come to you as a, as a sole voice, I can assure you of that. And I don't come to you with a black armband. I also don't fit the category, the cliche that, well, they're government haters, that's the problem. 
No, in my life, what I hear about is when I don't do something, or when I fail to do something, or I make a financial mistake, or once I remember, and it was only once I did something boneheaded. So government's run by people, people that are responsible for millions of dollars. So I come to you asking, where can we get more value out of our money something that's been happening in the last couple of years here. Are we going to have a nice down payment, hopefully I'll call it, on the roads in this next budget? Um, how does one get involved? Um, where is the outreach about the budget cycle? People can come in and testify in the end of May on it, but it's a done deal by then. So. Um, I don't come to you as someone that's <coughs> criticizing everything you've ever done or hates you or hates government. I come to you as someone that's concerned about the amount of debt we have in this country, the amount of debt that entities like TriMet are creating as they bully their way along. And I come to you as someone that has a certain amount of confidence that Clackamas County isn't going to duplicate Portland. I'll close by saying there's an article in the Tribune that um, just came out. And of course, it clearly states that there are differences in needs. And it's really important that our money is carefully spent. And I don't come to you complaining about that or expecting you to correct all the evils in Salem or Washington, DC. Thanks for your time, as always. Richard Bernard. <laughs> Actually, you are the guy I thought would be wearing a black armband. Um, you know, actually, uh, I don't think any of us think that what goes on in Salem or in Washington, D.C. is great. There are many things we disagree on. And all of us have already uh, mentioned that we do not support IP28. Um, I own a, a corporation. I pay taxes. Um, I, I think we all support corporations paying their fair share of taxes. <clears throat> I think the president recently did something that prevented a company leaving the United States, going to Ireland, saving a lot of taxes. Um, and, I, and I think that was a very smart move. It's too bad they didn't do it years ago. <laughs> but, uh, um, but, you know, um, I'm just talking about at this level, I think we do a great job with how we spend our money. And our budget meetings are open to the public. We had one a quarterly budget meeting yesterday, which I believe was open to the public, wasn't it? Yes. Yeah. And um, during the budget process, uh, it does make a difference. We had folks from NAMI come last year, made a difference. We gave them money, didn't we? Yep. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, it made a difference. You know, I've, we've had meetings where one person came and testified and changed the whole commission's mind. Uh, a development out in Milano uh, it made a big difference. So sometimes uh, it's the approach that one takes. And, and, and I think that gentleman that time in Milano really had some excellent comments. And just the commission changed their mind right on the spot. And, and I think that we're willing to do that. I don't think any of us walk into these meetings knowing exactly where we're at on, on things, and people do have influence. But the budget committee meetings, rarely does anyone show. Have you ever been to a, have you testified at a budget meeting? Yeah, you just watch them on TV? Well, it's hard to uh, participate on TV. But um, so I think one year we had one person show for a couple of years, and come on, be part of this. If you're gonna complain about how we spend money, show up and tell us what to do. Commissioner Sabs. Well, I, I know our budget meetings, you know, that can last about up to a week, maybe a little bit longer, which is just part of the process, but, uh, you know, getting back to the um, issue about roads, you mentioned um, the uh, affair at the chamber this morning with the congressman and I was sitting at the table when this, when that was over and a lot of people were approaching me talking about different transportation challenges and issues that are going on and when I roll that into the budget and the budget discussion 
And even though we don't have a lot of control over capital dollars, um, yeah, I would probably say perhaps if an army of people would show up with their road issues at the right time to talk to the budget committee, that that would be, maybe that would have an impact or not. But, you know, we do spend hundreds of millions of dollars on public safety and health, housing, and human services, but uh, we're only, we only get a paltry 23, comparatively, yeah. $23 million for, for road, just road maintenance. And there's not much in the way of capital going towards that. And as here in a couple of weeks, we'll be sitting down at the JPAC table, the Joint Policy Advisory Committee on Transportation for the Region. And we've got $130 million on the table. And a substantial amount of that um, may not be headed at all towards roads or very little of it towards roads. And I think that uh, <coughs> should give people some alarm that um, it's probably uh, a responsibility of all of us whether it's the region or the state or the federal government in this county to be advocating for that shortfall. And, and um, I know we don't have very much money uh, to commit or reprioritize towards roads. Uh, that's very limited, but I think that as we move, move forward, both with our legislators and, and the next cycle, that we advocate for that because we're, getting, we're just getting our clock cleaned uh, comparatively in other states. Washington State just passed was $15 billion um, transportation package, and they're doing things. That was one of the comments that was made. Geez, I go up to Seattle, and I and we have all these. They're just building things. There's a lot of activity. And, yeah, exactly. They, it's supported. So you know, I we need you know we need to make that investment, and that's the we is really all of us. I mean, all governments, all all citizens, and recognize that we're not making that investment, and uh, there's not enough money at the budget time to to do that. But at least uh, as we look towards. I think what is relative to the discussion as far as our budget is is trying to maintain a certain level of commitment um, by this commission for our road maintenance um, and demonstrate to the when we go to the voters in November, ideally, that uh, we put some skin in the game as well. So hopefully we can replicate that. Commissioner Schrader. And I'd just like to clarify a little bit of this with maintenance because you hear a lot about the maintenance is always asphalt. Well, it is more than that. It is actually striping, it's clearing brush from alongside the road, it's signage because the rural roads have, uh, you know, have those needs because of safety features. So when we talk about maintenance, you have to think broader than just chip seal and asphalt. They're the other pieces that have to be paid for, and rightly so, in order to make sure uh, people are safe. And I just want to make it clear as a commissioner, this is at least my third, if not possibly fourth time, that we have done an education program uh, saying to folks that our revenue stream for maintenance was not keeping up. We knew it in 2003. I remember uh, campaigning for uh, a voter-approved fee at that time as well. We called it the latte fee. You know, you could, you know, for the price of a latte, um, you know, for the year, we would have additionally added some needed revenue stream to our, uh, our, our opportunity to, to build, to actually just maintain the roads. And unfortunately, it, it hadn't, didn't catch on that they were bad. I'm feeling hopeful because we recently had a presentation uh, based on, um, you know, a, a poll that was put out there that people now are starting to see that transportation maintenance is, is actually a primary focus of theirs. I believe it's because of our education work that we've done. And you can see in the back of this room, the longer we ignore this problem, the bigger it will get. Well, I'm here to tell you since 2003, in my tenure here, it has never been ignored. We have been, we have been kind of pushing this again and again, and I'm hopeful that this time, um, uh, the voters will see that we don't have the same level of revenue streams as Washington County, for example, and we are uh, really falling behind and it's becoming a crisis. However, the positive side is that the work on OT03, we have repaired all of our rural bridges. The last one we're having a little bit of a glitch with at Carver, but I have a list of all the rural bridges that we actually did get funding for and repair in this county. Um, and that was a, a very, very um, important piece, as well as, uh, let us remember, with the last iteration of dollars we got from Salem, the um, jug handle project, and that is the interchange of 213, <coughs> which was at failure. So I guess you could kind of call that maintenance. It was actually getting that uh, intersection 
uh, up to snuff. So I really don't want people to think that uh, through the years that this has not been a priority. It always has been, and I'm hopeful this time that uh, the third, maybe the fourth time's the charm where people are now seeing this as a key priority, particularly for our rural economy. We are, uh, I think, making great headway in squeezing the most out of our dollars. Every year, our costs go up at minimum 3 percent, usually in the neighborhood of 4.5 percent. Yet we are glued, so to speak, to the 3 percent that we get from property tax increase. We, uh, we have an independent auditor uh, now which, who can do both financial performance audits and, uh, I think, efficiencies will be developed from that. Plus, we have performance clock -ups, our strategic plan, managing for results. And as that is more and more implemented uh, with the goal of, uh, of setting goals and then having measurability to make sure that, the, that those goals are achieved, I think we'll be able to pinch more from the proverbial penny. As far as IP28, that's already been mentioned. Jim's absolutely right. We all oppose it. It will be inflationary. And it will also drive big companies away from our state to other states. There's no reason why they'd stay in Oregon with that kind of onerous tax when they can just go to Clark County and, uh, and not pay that, still keep their same employees subject to that lovely travel across the Columbia River. All right, that's the end of citizens' communication. We have the consent agenda. I'll ask the clerk to read the consent agenda by title. All right, thank you, Mr. Chair. On the consent agenda, under Health, Housing, and Human Services, we have approval of a professional services agreement with Folk Time Inc. for peer support services at the Center Stone Crisis Clinic, approval of a Medicare group provider agreement with Family Care Inc. for primary care and mental health services, under our finance department, approval of a contract with Brockcamp and Jagger for the Silver Oak Building Tenant Improvement Project, and under elected officials, approval of previous business meeting minutes, and that concludes the consent agenda. Well, considering the commissioners may not want to remove any of these, I'll entertain a motion. I move we approve the consent agenda. Second. Motion made by Commissioner Bernard, seconded by Commissioner Schrader. Any further discussion? All right, Kevin. All right, Commissioner Bernard. Aye. Commissioner Schrader. Aye. Commissioner Savas. Aye. Chair Ludlow. Aye. Passes 4-0. Now, Mr. Krupp, it's time for your very important update. Yes, thank you, Mr. Chair. So, uh, you know, in the spirit of National County Government Month, I've got a number of items of good news to share with you about some of the things that uh, we have been doing here in Clackamas County. Uh, and, of course, with this week's theme being emergency response, public safety, and justice, I'd like to recognize one of our 911 call center dispatchers uh, for an award that she received just a few weeks ago, Lori Gillingham was honored with a HERO Award at a conference of the Association of Public Safety Communication Officials. Uh, Ms. Gillingham was recognized for attempts to save an Estacada man's life. So thanks to Lori, as well as all of our dispatchers uh, who help us through these emergency situations. Then I also wanted to share with you a, a story that we heard from a nice uh, couple that couldn't be happier about the county's home repair loan program. This is a program that provides loans to low-income homeowners for needed and critical repairs. The couple used the loan to be able to repair uh, and provide and build a, a new roof. And after several years, we heard from them. They said, we would like to thank you at this time for being able to literally keep a roof over our heads. We were in great need of the roof that thankfully came when needed. Being on a fixed income and qualifying for your program for our roof has helped us so much. And thank you for having this kind of program available to people in need because otherwise we don't know what we would have done. So a great job to our community development staff uh, for providing that service and program. And our water environment services staff um, heard uh, from the state laboratory folks uh, uh, that we passed, uh, our water quality lab passed an audit with flying colors. In fact, uh, after the audit was completed, the state representative wrote in saying, it's like a breath of fresh air when we see a laboratory that has everything in order, is well documented, and where the analysts know all the procedures 
when compared to the other laboratories we visit. So nice job, uh, Water Environment Services staff. You'll for, send for that. that notice to Oregon City, right? Just I will do that. Yes, so I'll share that. Let them know how good we are. Yes, thank you. And then, uh, then lastly, um, good news for families uh, and community park lovers. It's just in time for sunny days like we've got today with this 82 degree weather coming on. Uh, the North Clackamas Parks and Recreation District recently completed remodeling of the Harmony Road Neighborhood Park Playground. That's uh, located near Milwaukee and the North Clackamas Aquatic Center. They just finished improvements that included pouring new concrete to accommodate wheelchairs and they replaced the decking structure of the playground. So the playground is now open for play, and it couldn't be a better day to start. So thank you. Okay. All right, and now it's time for Commissioner's communication. We'll start with Commissioner Bernard. Well, when we talk, I, I just was reminded when Martha said that, you know, when years ago we used to get $15 million from forest revenues. From timber revenues gone, yeah. Timber That's revenues, right. and we've gone from $15 million to one million, uh, can, making up a fourteen million is not well. It's impossible. It really, is impossible. Uh, and I've been out with our crews many times. Uh, you know, one one thing that people don't realize, and and that is how important a ditch is next to the road. Keep the water off the road. Make sure the base doesn't get uh, damaged. <coughs> and um, the price for for uh, paving goes from, you know, maintenance forty million a mile, I think. To, I'm trying to read that. Ten times that amount. Ten times that amount uh, a mile. So it's 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 tremendous, and we're we're forty four hundred million in the hole already, because we have fourteen thousand miles of roads in Clackamas County. Uh, which John always says is from here to Cal uh, to Mexico, yep. Mexico border. Uh, that's a lot of roads. And you know, 205, we're not responsible for 205. It's a uh, ODOT highway. And we've actually decided to help uh, contribute a uh, million dollars to moving that project forward. Even uh, the Sunrise, it's not our road, but we contributed a ton of land as our fair share of uh, to that project, because none of these projects wouldn't happen without partnerships on all sides. That includes JPACT and, and ODOT and the state government and Clackamas County. It's uh, very difficult. It's also true in housing, you know, affordable housing. Uh, Milwaukee did a project, affordable housing. There must have been 10 partners that got involved in that. And uh, Happy Valley, I mean, um, Wilsonville in Charbonneau, I mean, in uh, Villebois did a housing project. I mean, there were probably more people who got the money to get that project to live than live in the project. So it's amazing what it takes. And I want to just say that, you know, uh, once a month we do a recognition lunch and folks come and talk to us about how great uh, working for Clackamas County is and how much they really care about that and folks from the lab have come and you know they just do an outstanding job making sure that what goes out in the river is cleaner than what came in actually so uh, uh, you know we do a great job um, I guess that's really all except that we're going to talk about Mitzi yes we call this the Jim's dog section yeah yeah, it's the the doggy part of the show. Uh, you know, uh, we have lots of dogs, and you know, if, if they don't find families, they uh, they uh, don't have much of a future. So this is Mitzi. She is a border collie mix, three year old, seeking a quiet adult only home. That means people above a certain age, uh, who are dog loving folks. She's looking for a family that will give her plenty of exercise, love, and attention. She could be your running partner. Polite, uh, being polite on the leash is just one of the things she does well. She loves snacks. They can be used to teach her lots of new things. For more information about Mitzi and other adoptable dogs, please contact Clackamas County Dog Services at 503-655-8628 or visit them on the web at www.clackmas.us forward slash dogs. 
Just one other thing about speed dating. <clears throat> I didn't know we had a, pro a program to roof houses. I, I didn't either. Commissioner Savas. Well, I, I, the uh, $15 million <coughs> of timber money, I, I looked into that a little bit. And I went, at least went back 10 years and realized that um, it's a smaller number. I think it was at least in the 10 years ago, it was 12 million. But just guess how much of that actually went to transportation. Uh, no, it wasn't 15 million, it wasn't 12. It was less than half actually went towards roads. Um, so I'll have some you mean, stats. You mean paving or road maintenance? <clears throat> Period. Hmm. Yeah, whether, regardless how it was spent, that majority, most of it went to general fund. Um, and then other things, but but uh, road funding activity was actually um, was actually uh, four and a half million ten years ago, when we were at twelve. Um, so um, yeah, numbers numbers do matter. Uh, I do want again. I just want to just touch a little bit more on this this regional. You know, you mentioned Jim, and I, and, I, and you're right. Uh, whether it's the highways 205 or Sunrise, that that's re ODOT's responsibility, but. ODOT needs a regional commitment um, in order to get that done. The region's got to say, yes, we want to build the highways because really they've got, in a lot of cases, especially in this region, they got their hands behind their tied their back. If, if Metro region says, no, we don't want to spend money on highways, guess what? We don't spend high road when he's on highways. And this region for a long, long time has not made a commitment towards highways. And now we have an undersized system that we're going to pour a lot of money in maintenance to maintain an undersized system. And sure, ODOT maintains some of that, and we maintain some of that. But um, I happen to again this at this uh, this breakfast um, uh, this morning with uh, Congressman Schrader there. After that was over, a number of people um, that approached me were from the rural part of Clackamas County, and they've got people and friends and family that are um, all having issues out in the rural area. And half our population is rural, but our county roads and state roads out in the rural area are just packed, uh, especially during rush hour. And we have people now that are driving from Woodburn, Donald, other areas where that are developing, where the sprawl, so to speak, you want to, or the housing's being done anyhow, are still coming up here for work. And uh, they're just congesting up the, the southern part of the county and into an area that's obviously the closer you get to Portland, the more plugged up it is. But I think it's important to, to let people know that it's not just ODOT. I mean, you can't, I, I don't think you can pin this on ODOT. Um, they have a limited amount of money. Uh, it's a lot of money. That has to be fairly distributed across the state. Uh, and yet, when it comes to a lot of the transportation improvements, they need to seek approval of this region because <clears throat> we are the metropolitan um, region that has a say in how we spend monies in this region. And if they've got their hands tied behind their back, it is what it is. And when, you know, the proposal, and we see, we'll see where it is in the next couple of weeks, but if the proposal comes out that 93% of the money is going to be spent on bikes and bike lanes and sidewalks and transit, um, that's sending the wrong message back, I think, to, to our citizens that are have a real serious issue with congestion. And now with smartphones and being able to map yourself a course that gets you to a destination faster might mean that your neighborhood street is now a cut-through street. So we have a lot of complications in that. What does that do for safety? It, it exacerbates safety issues. And uh, just want to close one note, speaking of safety, and that is, you know, we had a drowning um, over the weekend um, and let people know this time of year the river temperature is really really cold and um, physically not very many people can actually their their muscular system just it you just it just f makes people freeze and they just can't um, they just can't navigate in the water too long when the water temperature is in the l upper 40s low 40s or upper uh, lower 50s so be really careful out there and realize that the water's cold even though the temperature air temperature might be warm and and, um, and by all means, life rafts, all kinds of protection, uh, be careful out there. Commissioner Schrader. Okay, well, I have had a, a busy week here. Uh, yesterday, I attended um, the National Association of Counties. We had a phone conference uh, dealing with our community, workforce, and economic development committee, where we are actually getting our platform ready uh, to see how we're going to lobby Congress for what we need to have done with HUD, uh, with workforce, and with housing, uh, and Export-Import Bank, uh, all those kinds of things. And so we are setting that agenda, which I hope colleagues will also help inform our agenda as we uh, go forward 
um, with our lobbying efforts in Congress uh, for the dollars we need for various things. Um, one of the things I did want to highlight a little bit is that uh, April, uh, actually April 24th through 30th, 2016, is going to be National Reentry Week. And I know that my colleague, Commissioner Bernard, does a lot with public safety, and that is one of the, but one of the reasons I'm mentioning it today is because we have a new transition center that is designed to help people when they're out of jail get a soft, uh, kind of a soft hand handout, uh, not a handout, but a hand up to help them get reintegrated back in the community. And part of that is workforce training. And serving on the workforce board, we have put forward a, uh, a grant, but it's been very interesting because the grant is to the Department of um, Labor but also the Department of Justice at the federal level gets involved in this. And the issue we're dealing with at the federal level is the metrics for the Department of Labor and the Department of Justice are quite different for a grant. So some of the things the Department of Labor may be requiring uh, for a, a transition center really maybe isn't all as, as workable as a grant that you can get from the Department of Justice. So one of the things I'm starting to work on is, is to see if there's been any integration at that level of what the metrics would be, particularly for a, a barriered population to get the help to get back into the workforce at, at our transition center. Because remember, these are folks that have uh, various issues oftentimes. You don't want them to go back to jail. You want them to start a life, but yet sometimes the only way they can get started in a job is a part-time job, for example. And a grant from the Department of Labor may require that they have a full-time job. But just to get them started, getting a part-time job might be the necessary so way to go. So I'm actually looking on hopefully doing some work um, trying to align those two things. So then when we ask for dollars, the metrics that we are required to meet are appropriate to the demographic and population that we're working with. And officially, April 24th through 30th, through the Department of Justice is National Reentry Week, and they are asking uh, the prison systems around the country, uh, and hopefully our, we're doing something as well, I hope. I'm planning on finding out to talk about um, what they are doing to help folks uh, move from being incarcerated to actually get back uh, in the community. Um, I did also go to the eggs and issues this morning. I thought it was a very interesting discussion. Um, I do want to remind people that, yes, transportation infrastructure is key, but remember, we also need water infrastructure, we need sewer infrastructure, and we also need another project I've been working on is how do we get natural gas infrastructure out to rural communities. So I know that roads sometimes um, are often our primary focus, but um, I know that we all know that there are other pieces of infrastructure that are just going to be as critical for uh, getting goods and services out to people and making those goods actually with the appropriate infrastructure enabling our manufacturers to do just that. Um, finally, one of the things I, w I do want to point out, um, the other thing we did in transportation when I was actually first a commissioner, we made it our, uh, our job. We had the policy that for the Sunrise Corridor, we were actually acquiring land uh, with our development agency to ensure the footprint for that road. And it might be something we take a look at again to consider. It was very effective, and I'm convinced the reason why the Sunrise Corridor got moved up and actually the first phase is being done is because we made it a priority uh, back in 2003 and 2004 when any land came up that was available that we felt what could be in that um, and thank you, because you're shaking your head, yes, that could be in that corridor. We obtained it so we didn't have to go, um, so it made it easier to get the road built because we had the land and it, and it made that whole process simpler. So that might be something for phase two. We actually maybe look at, I'd like to relook at that policy and um, see if that's something we can reinstitute. Um, okay, arts and culture activities in the county, Sandy's Actor Theater, Steel Magnolias. The play is about the bond a group of different women share in a small town, southern community, and how they cope with the death of one of their own. Friday and Saturday, April 8th and 9th, 7.30 p.m., and 
Sunday, April 10th, 3 p.m. at Sandy Actors Theater, Clackamas Repertory Theater, Wing It, an interactive show for children ages 2 through 10. There will be singing, dancing, lots of laughter, and a great message about not fitting in. Saturday, April 9th, 10.30 a.m. Uh, at the Osterman Theater on the Clackamas Community College campus in Oregon City. And for more information about any event, go to the Arts Alliance website, clackamasartsalliance.org. Thank you. And um, Commissioner Smith is absent today, um, excuse, but uh, she was going to read this, instead I will. She's a, a Grange member, and I am as well. And April is National Grain, Grange Month. Since 1867, the Grange has been a grassroots movement for the benefit of American families and local communities to gather and meet. Grange programs are family-oriented, beginning with Junior Grange for children ages 4 through 13, for the purpose of getting children involved with their community, with agriculture, and with good citizenship. Grange activities support personal development, leadership seminars, and folk, uh, foster a wide, wide range of useful skills and abilities for personal growth through social, cultural, and educational programs. There are 16 active granges in Clackamas County. These granges ignite a passion in the community for service and involvement. To find a local grange near you, you can go to www.orgrange.com dot org forward slash find dash a dash Grange. I would like to encourage citizens of the county to recognize and participate in Grange activities and support Clackamas County Granges. Those are Frog Pond Grange in Wilsonville, Warner Grange in Canby, Harding Grange in um, Estacada, Boring Damascus Grange in Boring, Clark's Grange in Beaver Creek, Springwater Grange in Estacada, Milwaukee Grange in Milwaukee, Beaver Creek Grange in Beaver Creek, Eagle Creek uh, Grange in Eagle Creek, Molala um, Grange in, of course, Molala, Garfield Grange in Estacada, Abernathy in Oregon City, The Sandy in Sandy, Myrtlewood in Aurora, Redland Grange in Oregon City, really known as the Redland area, and Sunnyside does also have a Grange. So good for the Grange. Um, this um, last week we pin some pinwheels out in the circle of honor. And that had to do with acknowledging, I think there were like 500 of them out there, acknowledging the amount of children um, that have suffered child abuse and have been examined at the Children's Center. Uh, so it's a sad planting of those, but you know, the only cure for this is education and certainly uh, acknowledgement that when you uh, witness child abuse, you should turn that person in regardless if they're a family member or not, especially probably that. I met with a member of Oregon Solutions um, and um, talk about the problems on the Springwater Trail. Springwater Trail has um, some bad actors living alongside it. Uh, a woman was raped there three weeks ago. Um, and, you know, I think something has to be done that's similar to what we do with TriMet. TriMet has 11 different jurisdictions of police that do police the line. And spring water has to be addressed by the two counties, for sure, uh, by the Portland police, by Gresham, by everybody else out there. And um, I think we, we're going to probably have to work on that. Um, I was at the uh, Regional Wastewater Capacity Committee. And i got to say that meeting went a lot better than the previous ones. A lot of information that came out, and uh, I think appreciated by those members of that group. We uh, participated in the Clackamas County Business Alliance uh, Candidate Forum. Um, I spoke at the League of Women Voters of Clackamas County on road funding. I want to compliment Randy and Grant from uh, Department of Transportation Development who did the presentation. They did a fantastic job. Also, uh, three of the commissioners attended the Clackamas County Business Alliance Land Use Committee. And we talked about land use and transportation, both of which, of course, they're interested in and we are involved in. Uh, we formed a PAC, uh, Political Action Committee, uh, so it shows that this commission does agree on some things. We formed a PAC for one exclusive purpose only, and that is to put a voter's pamphlet statement in this May to encourage people to vote yes, so that we can send a money matter to them in November about our dwindling resources for road maintenance. Um, the um, the Family Violence Summit is coming up in the week of the 20th, and our sheriff puts this on. And I can't emphasize how important it is that people acknowledge that, that family abuse um, and violence 
has long-lasting effects on people. I've mentioned before that everybody, I think, should take the ACE test, Adverse Childhood Experience. It's only 10 questions. And I think for those of you who've had great difficulty growing up, um, it will help show you that you're not alone, first of all, that there are high ACE scores out there. Out of the 10, I got nine. But the way I changed was um, by a lot of people coming alongside me and encouraged me that, uh, that I could be better than what I was raised like. But uh, I will encourage people to go to that summit. Um, you know, we, we must change the intergenerational cycle of family violence. We must change that. And only by being made aware of that and working with some tools that can help these people will it ever change. Uh, next week, we have AOC on Monday, Association of Oregon Counties. Uh, we have an Unlocking the Locks lecture. Uh, I'll be at the fair board. And then we have a ribbon cutting. The, um, I wanted to say to you also that it is, uh, we have a couple more town halls left. Kevin's going to put that up right now. We had, I think it was 125 people come to the Oak Grove Town Hall, and it was nice to hear from people about trees, library, trees, library, and trees and library. Um, this, so our next one will be in Molala, uh, June 15th. And all of these start, I believe, at 6 p.m. It doesn't say that on there, but that's what time they start. And August 3rd, West Lynn. And then finishing up in October 5th in beautiful downtown Boring. You know, um, collaboration is not about gluing together existing issue, ego, egos. It's about the ideas that never existed until after everyone entered the room. We do that a lot on this commission. Uh, I th I'm very proud of the work that our commission has done since I've been here. I think we've come together on issues. Most of us don't hold grudges over decisions we lose on. Uh, and it's, uh, I think um, uh, this commission has worked very well representing the interests of citizens of Clackamas County. So it's a beautiful day. It's 1054. We got under an hour. It's just amazing. Thank you very much. Uh, there being no further business before the Clackamas County Commission this day, this meeting is adjourned.